what an episode what an episode in which everyone's decisions i support the maturity in the rejection was crazy and i have no fault with anyone anyway so let's get into love is blind episode 10 and 11. We are going to be talking through everything that stood out to me, at least. If I miss anything, pre please drop something in the comments, because I am for sure that I will. So we're starting off with the Stags and Hen Night, um, which is the Bachelor and Bachelorette parties, as I understood them. I really liked watching everybody. I liked the banter of what was going on. The guys, to me, are kind of funny. We see the girls get together, Demi is talking about how she met is gonna be meeting ollie's family at the wedding which is crazy it's kind of crazy when like regular people do that it's like yeah no my parents just haven't met them they'll be meeting at the wedding but for this one it's understandable but it's like eh, that's pressure jasmine downloads on her about her per overprotective mom to her friends and her friends are probably like yeah yeah just your mom like her friends are probably very used to her overprotective mom like, thank goodness she's self-aware, though, that she's like, yeah, my mom was, like, being a little, ugh. Jasmine would be the one to call Bobby on The Bachelor night. <laughs> I'm so sorry, my cat is just playing with her toys. This is gonna drive me a little bit insane. She would be the one to check in on the night that's, like, specifically made for them to be apart. <laughs> Catherine and Freddie are talking out their concerns with their friends, and I wrote down at this point, in my opinion, just say no. Just say no, because... I feel like they're just wanting to say yes for the ideal that it turns out okay, but it's like the realism of their marriage, that's not a healthy one, I don't think, right? <laughs> right? I forgot how fine Steven was. Steven is actually incredibly attractive. And I said this about Steven and Sabrina, but seriously, they're like the most attractive couple you've seen. We have three days until the wedding after the bachelorette. The couples have a few nights away. Is that normal? for when this happens. I think it's like great to have some separation, but I feel like three days until the wedding and then they like separate. I feel like it's always like they have one, ah, right? I don't know. Slowly, I feel Ollie and Demi should say yes. I feel as though I've been a little bit hard on Ollie and Demi because Ollie to me felt the art, felt like the archetype of the guy who like is a little bit more shallow and then kind of like fakes that he's into things that he's not just because he doesn't want to come off as a bad guy. Uh, and then Demi's just kind of like the girl that's like willing to be there with him and you know taken. I just feel like I was putting on this preconceived notion that I had of Ollie and that's not fair to him. It's really not and he ended up being a really good guy that I feel like I understand a lot more. I, I went from feeling like oh Ollie's not gonna be not, not gonna like it to, to seeing that like they're actually really i knew that they had a, like a good friendship a good foundation but i was scared that ollie was just gonna like rely on that and like not actually see like the real beauty between them in terms of romance romantic connection what the heck happened between those days between the weddings between the bachelorette the stags and hen's night and then or the bachelor and bachelorette and then the weddings because like any anything could have happened old flames could have reconnected in that time people could have been like or are they just planning the wedding? But it would be like really juicy if somebody came out and it was like, I saw Benaya at the club alone and he took my friend home. <laughs> Imagine Benaya at the club. <laughs> Sabrina and Steven, you sexy little couple. <laughs> Imagine they both say no at the altar and they just have like this dramatic fallout. And then we just find out their relationship was secretly really toxic. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> that would be the story. But of course, of course, no. So they're at their weddings. How, whenever they said the typical like, uh, you guys got uh, matched, married, chose to get married sight unseen. So now it's the time to decide, is love blind? How are we feeling about that? Because I think it's like a little corny. I'm like a couple seasons into Love is Blind and I'm like, but every time though, like I understand it's the show. I get it, it's the show. And they have to put some sort of a tagline in the like fact that they're getting married. But it's also kind of like, Ugh, like it just feels so manufactured that it just makes the wedding feel a little bit more cheap, right? Like, I don't know. Uh, so then we see that Sabrina and Steven say yes, becoming Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I've never seen the movie, but that to me just suits them. 
a sex because like aren't mr and mrs smith like a sexy couple here we are a sexy couple okay then we have maria and tom this one is interesting because they're the ones that i feel like have a very realistic situation as to what would happen if you um matched with somebody in the pods where they have such a connection such a compatibility but they just have different core values and i think that that is so great in terms of love is blind because it's such a real thing that happens in real life and on this show the differences in gender ideals and the fact that oh one person owns their house and then the other person is like do i want to pay your mortgage not really i don't really want to pay your mortgage in case we break up but if we do stay together that, that'd be cool i think it's just like a, a very interesting dynamic that, and i love that netflix has has this this archetype for them we see that tom's mom didn't feel comfortable coming to the wedding Ugh. in my opinion i just kind of feel like even if you disagree as a parent even if everything in you is telling you this is like a bad decision i feel like you need to stand by your children's bad decisions even like as long as they're not ethically harmful to anyone i feel as though you should just at least be there for your children but i don't know maybe tom doesn't have a grievance with it i did I did. So then we see that Tom is battling with the logic of saying we need more time and then the heart saying, but we love her. You know, the head and the heart, which is a, what a lot of people are having. So we see that Maria's mom, which I love Maria's family. Oh my God. I just feel like they're both, they're all so emotionally mature. They're all so open and inviting. And it just is, it just is a dynamic that you, I want to, I would experience I just want to be in their family for like a day Maria's mom is a beautiful talk with Tom and I love that type of support that is the type of support that I absolutely love and the fact that Tom's mom didn't come through was like you should be like a Maria's mom don't be a Tom's mom be a Maria's mom but then we see that Maria is also dealing with the grief of losing her father that was actually kind of hard to watch because grief is so so difficult on celebrations because you're just like thinking about all of the absence of the presence that you so badly crave. Ugh. So my prediction well, as I was writing this down is that Tom says no and he does it. He says no. And I am happy for the logical part of the fact that it's a no, but then I'm also sad for Maria because I know that she really, really wanted to be with him. So I'm like, ooh, ooh. I'm sorry, Maria, but this was also very much so for the best, right? Because I feel like the difference in opinions and values, it really is what breaks people up and they don't get real about the fact that they need to spend more time figuring that out. And the fact that he did is like, and now I'm a no. <laughs> um, Ollie and Demi, so they have their, their wedding day. They're nervous about the decision and the day. Both are both are very clearly just dysregulated without each other and kind of have an anxious undertone to them. Uh, as Ollie has ADHD and as I know, I know what it's like to be in, some, in a relationship with somebody with ADHD. Like I completely see this dynamic as something that is uh, like similar to me and my husband's. When you are with somebody for the first couple of like months when they have ADHD, it's like, everything about you guys is just you guys are in entrenched in your world and everything that's happening is between i, I don't know i don't know explain it but like the infatuation really hits hard and when you go through like stress the infatuation of people with adhd is due to the fact that adhd is a dopamine deficiency and so like you have to really focus on the things that like stimulate you so like you're hyper focused on the things that interest you and you're really not interested in the things that uninterest you so like being focused and reg and regulated through like a person is like what takes up most of the space in your mind and when you have to do like regular things like Ollie was saying he has issues with like chores and stuff that's just because it doesn't stimulate his brain it doesn't like make him feel regulated to do so so the this situation to me makes sense that they're kind of feeling like um emotional and drained by it because I feel as though and I am projecting as somebody in the ADHD relationship and then also I read a book on the ADHD's effect on marriage and I know it's like oh I read one book I it was impactful to me and I like took a lot from it I see that this is something that would make a lot of sense that they're having a lot of issues with anyway my prediction was that they say no it's crazy that I just said they say no I should have I think I was gonna say that Ollie says no but then we see that it's Demi who says no and then Ollie's like 
what <laughs> why which kind of shocked me because i thought he was gonna maybe like just respect it um because i thought maybe he was gonna be on the same like vibration he wants, goes ahead and says no and i think it's for the best anybody who says no i'm like because at this point i feel like when you look at love is blind you're like okay you either say yes because you're 110 percent and you were like absolutely leading into the thing and you don't have any major issues or you say no because you want to like figure things out for later i feel like um this round of love is blind there wasn't there there weren't any people that said no simply out of like i don't like you i don't want to be with you it was just like a like we need to have a little bit more time together which is like so understandable why don't they put that as an option kind of like a tentative yes <laughs> like not that but you know kind of the idea of this is like all way too much for us we're going to be engaged for a long time but that's just not exciting for tv i guess realism is not exciting for tv i'm really happy that demi said i do for now because it was just such a mature idea everybody is just so mature in this because they're older love is blind um us just has like so many 20 year olds who like, are like i don't know if i can it's like you're not getting married like i got married at 22 so i like i get it being married young is like something that some places have been normalized some places don't but like love is blind to me when you have like young people doing it it just feels so much more dramatic and so much more stupid and this to me felt mature and actually very well thought out because they're older he says it's not the end of demi and ollie which is amazing because i do like them together because i really do feel like they are people who are best friends and need to like grow in a friendship for real then we have jasmine and bobby mm, bobby i'm scared for you <laughs> i think america not america the uk <laughs> The audience is scared for you, Bobby, just because of her mom. Like her mom, to me, freaks me out because I feel like she's close to her mom and she's letting her mom not have like great boundaries with her. And so like, I don't know if you want to marry into that family. Personally, I don't think that you marry into your spouse. I mean, I don't think that you like marry your spouse's family. Like as much as like, I'm in my spouse's family, it's also kind of like, I chose you. And like, yeah, you have people that you come with, but at the same time, like, I'm choosing you as a person. Um, I hope we all like meld and can like love each other. But at the end of the day, I'm choosing this individual, okay? Like whoever comes with them has to respect me, but we don't have to be like, I don't know, like on the same, you know, I don't know. Just because you're compatible with your partner doesn't mean you're compatible with the people that come with them. You know what I mean? you know what i mean okay jasmine's mom we see plants doubts in jasmine about jasmine liking bobby more than bobby likes her which is like um bobby sat through you literally telling him that he was uneducated to his face and about how it's hard for uneducated people and educated ed educated people to talk <laughs> when has that ever been a th i don't think that jasmine would just sit through that <laughs> And then the whole finances thing is kind of like annoying because I feel like it was very kind of classist of her. Or I feel like there, she has themes of like classism and um, I don't know, things that are just problematic that she shouldn't be saying out loud. My prediction was that Jasmine says no because she really feels Jasmine's mom's opinion. And then we get to the altar and we see that Bobby says I do. And it was like, oh, ah! and then you're like, is Jasmine and Jasmine says I do as well beautiful that was beautiful so and then we got to nicole and benaya um i said i think that they should say no and get to know each other nicole and benaya to me i have felt this way from the beginning since seeing them um since she broke it off with sam i'm like i understand like benaya is a really cool person and i think that nicole and him work really well but there's just something about there's just something about them that just feels a little immature in relation to the other couples you know what i mean not in the way that they are explosive or like negative but they just kind of feel like for some reason they just don't they don't feel i don't know i like them together but i feel like they just need more time to age <laughs> and to mature even though like benaya's one of the oldest there i think i don't know i said both ben and uh nicole have doubts ben slept an hour and a half can you imagine 
I can't imagine. I like slept pretty good the day that I got married, but like sleeping in an hour and a half the night before. Oh, but it's, I get it's also nerves. But now I knows what he's gonna say. I thought that was gonna be like a oh yeah I know I'm gonna say no, and then I'm shocked as to finding out that Nicole's dad was working like had a work thing and just couldn't come. I was like oh my what because Nicole's dad seems like down for this you know, but I mean at the same time are the wedding the weddings are kind of like a last minute thing like. If they tell, if they told their friends and family like two weeks before that they're getting married, and then all of a sudden they gotta like make these work arrangements, but like what if you had these work arrangements for like a year or like a couple months? It's like, but no, I was just surprised because Nicole's dad seems like really like into this whole thing. Shook me a little, and we see that Nicole and Ben and us wholesomely. <gasps> And then I almost forgot about Catherine and Thred Freddie. <laughs> like, the fact that there was another wedding, I thought it was just gonna end directly after Nicole and Ben's for some reason. I, like, I, I thought they were gonna, like, have, like, a little, like, where are they now segment when I was looking at the time. But, <laughs> of course, no, there's Catherine and Freddie. Catherine seems really up for the wedding. And even though they both have doubts, I feel like Catherine was, like, very giddy, leaning into everything. Whereas, like, Nicole even said, like, this is all, like, frills, but this is, like, actually a marriage. I feel like... Catherine is the type of person who's like down for like the wedding planning the wedding fantasy the blah 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 and then when it comes to like the actual commitment is when things just go down but yeah so then we see that Freddie's having doubts Freddie stops talking with her sister with her sister with his sister sister is just a straight shooter she's kind of like listen listen I have my doubts about her. She's a great girl, but I have my doubts. It's phenomenal that she said that because I think that you could easily be in a position to be like, no, like I trust you. Like do whatever you want, marry her. Um, Because Catherine just comes with some warning signs and I feel like it's a little bit too hypercritical of him. And it's kind of draining to see because we all love Freddie because he's sexy. That's literally, not that he's just sexy, but he's also, he seems like a kind soul. He seems to be very thoughtful and she doesn't seem to give that like same energy back. She seems a little bit more immature, seems to lean into toxicity a little bit more. It doesn't seem to be marriage material. Well, not marriage material. Let me not, I don't know. That just feels a little bit oppressive for me, for me to say <laughs> yet. So I think that they should say no. So then we get to the altar and we see that Freddy says no. And Catherine takes it really hard, which of course, like, of course you have to. <laughs> Not you have to. Of course she does because it's like, you just rejected me. Um, I'm adopted. I've already been through one rejection and this is the second. Your days are done. <laughs> I'm also adopted so I can make that joke, okay? Biologicals. Thank God that they didn't get married because Catherine, I just feel like, it's, if you're like 29, being like, the reason that I'm bossy and snippy with you and treat you horribly is because I'm adopted. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> Go to therapy and then maybe consider, consider that you're like ready for like actual commitment, you know? Also, when they, when they say no, does the engagement just continue? Like, are they, that might be a dumb question. But I was like, does the, does the engagement continue or are they kind of just like, well, we're just going to date from now on. We've been dating you know, because I feel like whenever the other couples from Love is Blind US don't marry, they don't say like, oh yeah, we like are still engaged and gonna get married at some point. I feel like it's like they always like just end it and then they like start fresh or don't and then don't get married. <laughs> anyway, so that is all I had for Love is Blind episode 10 through 11. If you liked this in any way, shape or form, please let me know through a comment or um a lie <laughs> i hate asking for affirmation it's so hard but seriously check out my links below see how you can support me and wherever you are whoever you are whatever you're doing whatever time of day it is let me know what you think about the season please and i hope you have an amazing morning afternoon or night